Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to bring you guys a review of the iFly Tech AI Note Air 2. Now, the iFly Tech AI Note Air 2 is an all in one e ink digital paper tablet. And iFly Tech actually reached out to me and offered to send me one of these in order to review for you guys. The product looked really interesting, so I said yes, but also pointed out that I will make an honest review. That means I haven't paid for this product, but also this is not a sponsored video. What I'm going to do in this video is share everything you need to know about this device and my thoughts about it. And this is going to be quite a long video because there's lots of features to talk about, and so I'll put chapter markers below. And let's kick off and talk about price. Now this has a price of around £460. It's worth noting, however, that there are regularly offers on. On top of that, for an extra £20 when you place your order, you can also get a case for it. And I'd really recommend picking a case up just to protect it. And really that price point is reflective of the quality of this device, so let's talk about the design. And the first thing you'll notice with the AI Note Air 2 is just how light it is. It actually weighs just over 250 grams, but the distribution of that weight makes it feel lighter when you're holding it. The design on the front is this large 8.2 inch e-ink display with slim black bezels. And then it has this nice dark grey top where you'll find two of the four microphones and the speaker. Flipping it over we have this nice dark grey back with a small bump at the top to bring the camera level with that raised area at the top of it. This stops any rocking when you put it on a desk. On the top you have the power button with a built in fingerprint scanner and a USB-C port. This is used for charging and for connecting devices to transfer things like ebooks onto this tablet. The AI Note Air 2 is really beautifully designed and feels great to hold and the largely metal body makes it feel really premium. Alongside the tablet itself, you also get the stylus pen and this is designed to match the device. This pen has a button on the side which you can map to different functions on the tablet. It has a replaceable stylus tip and the other end has a rubber end which is designed to be flexible and allows you to rub out things as you've written them. It also has one side that is completely flat for attaching it magnetically to the side of the tablet. Now it's worth noting this magnet attachment isn't super strong, so if you're traveling with it, you are gonna to wanna to keep the pencil separately. And this all moves nicely on to talk about spec. So inside you will find a 2600 milliamp hour battery. This should keep it going for a really long time and in testing it over the last couple of weeks, I've actually not had to charge it once. There's also auto sleep and auto off options in the settings to help optimize battery life further. The camera on the back is a five megapixel camera, but it's not designed for taking photos. It's actually designed for scanning documents. This device has four microphones built in, two at the top on the front and two at the bottom on the front. This helps it accurately transcribe voice to text and it can even be used in meetings to pick up voices coming from different places in the room. In that record mode, it also show you roughly where it thinks the voice is coming from on a little map at the top. On the front of the top, there's also a speaker. And then we should also talk about that screen. And that screen is a 293 PPI e-ink screen. It's got a backlight and you can switch those settings between 24 different options. That includes going between warm and cold light levels, but also brightness levels. This helps make it really comfortable to read, even if you're in a really dark room. It supports Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and then for document format supports PDF, EPUB, and text documents. It's also worth noting that there are onboard Office apps and also OneDrive integration. This means you can open Office documents and sync them between your OneDrive. In terms of processing power, inside there is a quad-core 1.8 gigahertz CPU. This has four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes built-in memory. And the software on it is a custom version of Android 11. And then when it comes to converting handwriting to text, it supports 83 different languages. That includes English UK and English US, but also Welsh for anyone watching this video in Wales. For voice to text transcription of meetings, it supports up to 14 different languages. That includes English, German, Spanish, and Chinese. And then for translations, it currently supports seven different languages. Those are English, Japanese, Korean, French, German, Spanish, and Chinese. And then finally for spec, it's worth noting that notes recorded on the device are synced to an AI Note mobile app. That means if you choose to switch that feature on and set up an account, you can access your notes on other devices. And then for spec, we should talk about that stylus. And firstly, this stylus requires absolutely no charging. This is crazy and it's automatically paired with a tablet out of the box. Secondly, the design of that tip means that it does retract slightly when you press. And combining that with the 4096 pressure sensitivity, this thing really does feel like you're writing on paper. It also has very, very low latency. And of course, as you'd expect for some kind of stylus, it's really comfortable to hold as well. So that's all of the stuff on spec. So let's talk about getting this thing set up and running. And setting up is pretty simple. You simply unbox it and turn it on. You'll then be talked through setting up a language and a region, setting the count up, and then you're done. 
At this point, you can also set up a few other things if you want to. That includes setting up things like email accounts on the device as well. Now it includes native support for Gmail, but you can set up any email account you like as long as you've got the right credentials. You might also want to log into your OneDrive account as well. Now there are a small amount of third-party apps available on this tablet. The most useful of these is of course the Kindle app. That means if you're already part of the Kindle ecosystem, you can read all of your existing Kindle books on this device. And that's pretty much it for setup. It's nice and simple and it's just easy to work through. So let's get on to the really important part of this review and talk about using it. So when you come to unlock it, you can do so with a passcode or with the fingerprint reader on the top button. This fingerprint reader is pretty responsive. And during the setup process, you'll have had the option to add fingerprints if you want to, or you can go back into settings and add them there. That main display when you first unlock it has three core tabs at the top, notes, schedule, and reading. And then you've got quick links for the document scanner, email, extra apps, and settings. You can also easily access open apps and view the time, battery, and Wi-Fi statuses. This interface is nice and clean, and it's also pretty responsive whether you tap with your finger or the pen. And the standout feature of this tablet has got to be the voice to text feature. In the notes tab, you simply hit record and it will immediately start transcribing what's being said around you. If you need to, you can change the language and you can even translate in real time, which is really impressive. Now, both of those features do require you to be online. Now, the grid at the top also shows you roughly where the voice is coming from. And this shows off how those four microphones do work together. This means if you're in a meeting with a group of people, it could capture as much as possible what's going on around you. Now, I don't have in-person meetings for my job because I work fully remotely, but I have fired it up during some of our Google meetings and that works well as well. You can also use the area beneath the live transcription to make notes with the pen. And these get synced to the position of the transcription at the time when you made that note. If you need to, you can also make tweaks to the transcription. Alongside that, it also creates an audio recording. That means when you tap the words in the transcription, the audio will start playing from that point in the recording. That means if a transcription doesn't make sense, you can tap it and re-listen to what was actually said. This is great for tidying up notes post-meeting. But not only that, if you tap one of the notes you took during the transcription, it will also play the meeting from that position and show you on the transcribed notes where you actually made that note. That means you can cross-reference what it was that made you write that thing down. And of course, if you want to add to the notes, you can use the pen or stylus to add to them as well. Now those notes sync to the AI Note app, which means you can access them on other devices as well. There's also options to share them to web, PDF, word recording files, and share via a QR code or email. Now there's lots of other features, but one really interesting one is the summary feature, which uses ChatGPT to generate a summary of your meeting. And these features are seriously impressive. And I've actually found it really useful for jotting down ideas for YouTube videos. But alongside that, I've also found it really useful for jotting down song ideas when I'm trying to write a song with my guitar. This is especially useful because I can record the session, it will transcribe stuff, I can add notes, and I can drag things around later on. Likewise, the writing mode is also useful for something like note-taking or songwriting. Now you can choose whether you want to type or write notes or do a combination of both. When you're using that pen, you can also choose the thickness of the pen. But alongside that, the pressure you put also impacts the thickness of what you're writing down. The delay between you writing and a text appearing is so small that combined with the tip of the pen that has this kind of movement in it, it does feel really close to writing on paper. And that rubber tip at the other end makes it really easy to quickly erase something if you need to. And again, because that end is flexible, it feels like you're using a rubber. There's also a tool that lets you grab text and move your notes around. This makes it incredibly useful for jotting down ideas when doing something like songwriting, when you might want to move verses and choruses around. And of course, when you're done, you can turn your handwriting into text. In this write feature, there's also some templates available. That includes things like SWOT analysis, creating a fitness plan, or taking meeting minutes. All of this text recognition and writing to text is done locally. That means you don't have to be online for it. So that's notes. And the next core feature is schedule. And this gives you a calendar complete with to-dos where you can add in meetings and reminders. You can also view the notes you took on a particular day, making this really useful to go back through your past notes and meetings via a sort of timeline. The main disadvantage of this is that at the moment, the calendar doesn't sync with any third-party services. That means it doesn't sync with something like Google Calendar or Apple Calendar. And then finally, for the core features, we should talk about reading on this. And the reading tab is a space where you can add your own books and notes in a variety of formats, including PDF, text, and EPUB. You can add these to the device via Wi-Fi or via USB. You can also sort them into folders. Alongside that, one of the AI features when you're actually in a book allows it to actually read this book to you. This is pretty useful. Where I've really been testing reading on this device, however, is in the Kindle app. And that's because it gives me access to all of my books on a really comfortable screen to read on. And that adjustable backlight means that it's great for all lighting conditions. 
and the lightness of the device itself means it is really comfortable to hold for a long period of time. One other feature I should also mention is the ability to scan documents using the camera. This is especially useful because once you've scanned the document, you can then go back in and annotate it with that pen. So all in all, what's the verdict? So the iFlyTech AI Note Air 2 is a really beautifully designed piece of tech, and it does a lot of things really well. The ability to write notes and have them convert to text and have meetings transcribe in real time whilst you make notes is really useful. And in testing this, I've even been using a translating feature to see how understandable my German pronunciation is. And I've done that by practicing speaking German to this device. It's also been really useful to write down song ideas because it gives me a distraction-free device where I'm not getting notifications that I can work from. And then of course it's great for reading too, and that e-ink display makes it really comfortable to use for long periods of time. And of course that comfortability applies to whatever you're using this device for. But what are the downsides? The main downside in my opinion is the ability for it to sync to other services. The OneDrive integration is nice, but for the calendar and to-do list to be really useful, it really does need to sync with things like Google and Apple and other popular calendar services. If I'm being really picky, I also think the magnet that holds the pen to the side of the device needs to be stronger. It's quite easy just to knock it off. I will of course be feeding all of this back to iFlyTech. If you guys have got any questions about this device, do stick them below and I will answer those for you. If you do want to pick one up, I'll put some links below where you can pick one up. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys again soon.